Hello, I'm here with Erling Roland. He is a professor of educational psychology. And today we're talking about bullying. So, if we think there are there is some bullying going on, is it easy to to detect bullying? Sometimes it can be easy. It can be uh, easily seen. For example, physical bullying uh, is not very difficult to detect no. often, but uh, much bullying is difficult to detect, especially uh, the exclusion form. Uh, we often say that the girl bullying, uh, bullying amongst the girls, uh, are often very uh, difficult to detect. Mm. There are also small, uh, tiny signs that they use and so on. Um, but it helps, of course, very much if a uh, teacher uh, knows the pupil well. Uh, then the teacher will have more information uh, and be able to, to see more uh, himself or herself. Uh, and there are certain signs also. Uh, for example, parents can, uh, can tell teacher that, uh, oh girl, really don't want to go to school. There are much headache in the morning, and so on. They feel sick. That is uh, that is signs to look for. Um, sometimes uh, a victim will go very late to school in the morning, not to meet anyone, or very early, or another route than the most logical one, and so on. Um, sometimes the victim will uh, learn slower, the mm. marks will go down, they often seem to be unhappy, don't want to go out in the afternoon, in the evening. So that is signs to look for uh, directly with the victim. Um, also the atmosphere in the class can be important. If there are many cliques there, groups, uh, bad atmosphere, bad culture there, that can be uh, an indicator. Mm. So uh, it is difficult to say that there is one or two very certain signs. There are. It's it's better to to be open-minded and uh, look for many signs and uh, many different signs. Uh, so and. To communicate uh, with the parents, also that is that is important. Right. Yeah. So, what should be done if bullying is detected? It is important that uh, something uh, then is done, really, because uh, if not, the pupils will uh, think that this is okay. Uh, the teachers, the school uh, doesn't uh, care, and that is a, is a, a dangerous say, sign. I will say. So it is important that something is done. And what should be done then? Um, the first uh, thing that should be done is that <coughs> the the, te the class teacher, that is the best if, if the teacher can do this, mm. uh, the teacher who knows the pupils well, should first talk with the victim in uh, a room, being alone with the victim. Mm -hmm and uh, comfort the victim and really say that uh, I know what is going on. The victim is all uh, sometimes so afraid that uh, they don't want to talk, they, want, uh, they don't want to say anything. So the teachers should really know, uh, uh, be informed enough to say to the victim, I know that you are a victim of bullying mm -hmm. and continue by saying that uh, I and the school will help you as much as we can. Um, and uh, the victim should also uh, be uh, told that uh, he or she should be informed about what will uh, happen, what will be done uh, towards the, the bullies, for example, right. because they are often very afraid of that. And you, you, you talk to the victim before you start talking to yes. the bullies? That is best because mm -hmm. it is uh, it is not good to uh, to feel that something is going on with bullies. For example, the uh, 
teacher talking with the police without being involved, without knowing what is going on. So, so that is one reason why it is best to start with the victim right. and to comfort the victim and to um, to end the first conversation that can be, for example, 15 minutes mm. uh, by saying that uh, we will meet again uh, and set a date uh, for that uh, so that the victim really know that, knows that he uh, or she will be followed up. Right. And what about the bullies? Do they call them in all together? If they are, let's say it's three bullies, mm. for instance. That is the most common mistake, I will say, uh, to call in, if there are three bullies, to call them in all together. Then the, uh, they will be strong, the group will be strong. It is difficult, really, to, uh, to move them then. Mm. So uh, the important procedure is to talk with them one by one. Um, the teacher uh, should cooperate with uh, a colleague uh, who uh, teaches the class. The teacher could go into the class, uh, ask for uh, ask the teacher to uh, be allowed to talk with uh, Peter, for example, mm. and uh, say to Peter, "Come with me. Go into a group room to be alone." And uh, there, the teacher should uh, say very firmly that uh, we know what you are doing, and this must stop immediately. So the teacher should not discuss, just tell that this should stop. Mm. Uh, no room for, uh, for, uh, for, for discussion, as I said. It's just, you have to be firm. and You have to be firm. Mm. Uh, but uh, continue by asking the pupil if uh, he or she would want to say anything. Mm -hmm. Just listen to that, not discuss. That's, that's the main uh, procedure. If you begin to discuss with uh, the bully, you will often uh, lost control over the situation. Many bullies are very clever in uh, tricking the teacher there. Mm. So uh, just listen and repeat that this should stop immediately. Uh, and uh, that meeting with uh, the bully should not be long, maybe five minutes. Mm. That's most most effective. Right. So after you've uh, you've called in bully, the first bully. Uh, then it's the same with the next and, and the third bully, so it's one, yes. one by one. Yes, uh, the teacher should follow uh, the first pupil back to class mm -hmm. and uh, uh, take uh, with the next one. Mm. And exactly the same procedure. And when you have talked to all the bullies, what then? Then the time is to, uh, to leave uh, the last bully right here go back to the class, uh, ask the first two to uh, come, mm -hmm. and then to talk with the group. Then it's much easier. And uh, the teacher should then uh, shortly repeat what uh, he or she has talked with uh, the first bully, the next one, and the third one, so that they can relax on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then to try to to build up the group, to, to stop, to cooperate on stopping, mm. and uh, even better to uh, cooperate on, on helping a little, uh, being kind to the victim, for example. Uh, also, the teacher should say that uh, your parents will be contact contacted today. Yeah. What about the parents? Yeah, Should they be involved in this? Uh? They should be involved. Normally, yes. Um, the, the parents of uh, the bullies and also, of course, the parents of the victim. Right. Uh, so um, uh, that will often be the end of the conversation with the victim that uh, I, teach used to say, I will contact, contact your parents today if they are uh, not already involved. And should this be discussed in parents' meetings? Uh, it can be done, but it is uh, uh, the most important is that the teacher communicate uh, in a 
confident way with the parents of uh, the victim, uh, inform them, agree on what to do. And uh, that agreement should be that the teachers should be uh, in charge of what is doing. Uh, it is not often good if a uh, teacher do something and the parents or the victim do other things. Hmm. Um, it can sometimes be difficult to talk with the parents of the bullies. They can be defensive and even aggressive, but that is not often, I would say. Uh, the teachers should be uh, uh, polite and but, but firm, hmm. uh, inform, inform them and uh, ask for cooperation. That is often best to be done uh, by uh, one couple of parents uh, uh, and then the next couple. Uh, not all together, but it can be done all together. Right. So um, I would say that the safe procedure will be to talk with the parents of the victim immediately, to, uh, to talk with uh, the father or mother or both uh, for the, for the one of the bullies and then another meeting with uh, the next couple and so on. And if the bullying continues after this, what then? Yes, the, this procedure to, uh, to first talk with the victim, then with uh, the bullies one by one and then the group is very effective. Mm. Um, but it, it can fail. <laughs> uh, and uh, what to do then? Are there any reactions? Yes. Uh, imagine that uh, the school, the teacher and the school simply gives in, oh, nothing can be done. That is bad. Mm. So uh, some schools uh, think that we have to move the victim to another school. Of course, if the situation is very, very bad, I will not say that that should not be done, but in principle, it should not be done. It's it is the bullies that should be followed up. And if this first procedure do not doesn't work, mm. um, the teacher should address one of the bullies or one by one, saying that uh, uh, if this uh, doesn't stop immediately, uh, sanctions will be uh, the result for you. Mm. And you can, uh, there are many uh, sanctions you can use, and that will be uh, individual also. Uh, what kind of sanctions would be uh, right to use uh, towards that and that bully? An example could be that uh, the bully is not allowed to be out in the schoolyard, for example, in the breaks mm. for for some time. Should the bullying be di discussed in the class? That is difficult to answer yes or no to that question. Um, it can be done, uh, but if it should, if it is done, uh, the victim should be well prepared, informed before the meeting, mm -hmm. and also the bullies. And uh, I would also say the parents of uh, both victim and the police. And the teacher should really feel that he or she is in control in class if, uh, if the case is discussed openly in the class. Mm. Um, it can be dangerous to do it if, uh, if uh, this is not well prepared. But it can also be good to do it uh, and effective uh, if the teacher has a good standing in the class or is able to uh, con conduct this, this discussion, inform the, pu uh, the other pupils what has happened and uh, what has been agreed and so on, that can be good. So it, uh, it, it's really much up to the teacher to feel if, uh, if this will function uh, and if it should be done, prepare it uh, before the meeting.